Hello and welcome to the session. In this session we will use matrices to represent and manipulate data. Now suppose you go to market to buy milk, butter and bread. Now you visit two stores A and B. Now in store A, bread costs two dollars, milk costs one point five zero dollars, butter costs two point three five dollars, and in store B, the cost of bread, milk, and butter is two point five zero dollars, one point six zero dollars, and two point two zero dollars respectively. Now we want to arrange this data in row and column form. One method we already know is two-way tables. Now let us consider the following two-way table. This two-way table shows the cost in dollars of three products, bread, butter and milk in two different stores that is store A and store B. Now we will represent the same data in matrix form. Now matrix is rectangular array of numbers arranged in rows and columns. Now this table has three rows and two columns. Now this is row 1, this is row 2, this is row 3, this is column 1 and this is column 2. Now we are use the prices in rows and columns. In a matrix which will be written inside a square bracket. So this will be the cost matrix. Here we have written the prices in rows and columns within a square bracket. So, this represents the cost matrix. So, this is row 1, this is row 2, this is row 3, this is column 1 and this is column 2, where rows correspond to products and columns correspond two stores and if we remember what makes up rows and columns we simply write it as matrix with elements in first row as 2 2.50 elements in second row as 1.50 1.60 and elements in third row as 2.35 and 2.20 and each value in the matrix is called an element of the matrix. Now let us discuss dimension of a matrix. Now, number of rows and columns gives dimension or order of the matrix. Now the above matrix has three rows and two columns. So, its order or dimension is 3 cross 2. So, any matrix having m rows and m columns has order m cross n. And the number of elements in a matrix of order m cross n 
will be the product and n now here the order of the given matrix is 3 plus 2 it means number of elements in this matrix is 3 into 2 that is equal to 6 so this matrix has 6 elements now let us discuss representation of matrix now we generally denote a matrix by capital letter A, capital letter B, capital letter C, etc. Like, we'll write A is a matrix, with elements in first row as 2, 2.50, Elements in second row as 1.50, 1.60 and elements in third row as 2.35 and 2.20 and it is a 3 cross 2 matrix. So we will write 3 cross 2 here which represents order of the matrix and Elements of matrix are generally denoted by A I J where I is I row and J is Jth column and A I J means element in I row and jth column. Now suppose from this matrix we have to find A 3 2 now here I is equal to 3 and J is equal to 2 it means we have to find element in third row and second column now here, this is the third row and this is the second column and the element in third row and second column is 2.20. So, A32 is equal to 2.20. And that element is 1.50. So this is the journal notation of a matrix. Now let us discuss adjacency matrix. Now adjacency matrix shows the connection between the rows and columns and its elements are mostly denoted by one and zero. Now let us discuss an example. The classmates are asked to indicate with whom they would like to go to a movie. Their response is summarized in a matrix. The matrix is read from row to column. 1 means yes and 0 means no. So we have following matrix. The matrix shows which row members will like to go with which column members. If we want to find whether C will like to go with D or not, C row corresponding to capital letter C now see the element corresponding to the column D in that row and element there 
is 1, which means yes. So we say, C will like to go to movie with D. Also we can see from the matrix that A will like to go to movie with B and E. And also you can see that A will not like to go alone or with C and D. So in this way you can read this matrix. And now let us discuss network and matrices. Now a graph or network is a set of points, some or all of which are connected by a set of lines and the points are known as nodes or vertices. In graph, we can move from node to node in a line. Now let us see the two graphs. One has arrows on the lines which tell us direction in which we can move from one node to other. And the second graph is without arrows. Where we can move in any direction. Now if we are allowed to move in either direction along the lines, then no direction is given on lines. The lines are called edges and graph is undirected. And if we are allowed to move only in one direction along the line, then graph is directed graph or digraph. And here, pair of nodes that are directly connected by edges are said to be adjacent nodes. Now, a matrix can be used to store information about networks and these matrices are also called adjacency matrices. Now let us see the following network. Here we see the possible paths between the houses of four friends A, B, C and D. These paths can be displayed in adjacency matrix. Now if there are n nodes, then dimension of matrix is n cross n. That is, number of rows is equal to number of columns. Now here in this network you can see that we have four nodes. So dimension of matrix will be 4 cross 4. The elements in the matrix show the number of paths which directly lead from one vertex to the other. And we read the matrix from row to column. And this is a directed network. So we can move only in given direction like we can move from D to A, but we cannot move from A to D. Now let us write the matrix. So here, first of all, we put a square bracket. Then in rows, we write from and label the notes A, B, C and D and 
in columns we write to and we write notes a b c and d now we see the first element in the first row is from a to a that is from node a to node a now there is no edge here in this network so entry is zero then second element is from a to b and in this network you can see there is one arc from a to b so entry is 1 now from a to c there is one path so entry is again 1 now here we know that we can move from d to a but we cannot move from a to d so from a to d there is no path that means here entry is zero similarly we write all other elements and we get this adjacency matrix so in this session we have discussed the method of organizing a data in matrix form and this completes our session hope you all have enjoyed the session